Hello and welcome to the first of Biofoundry's videos on the mixing and preparation of mini prep buffers for plasmid purification. All of our recipes have been sourced from openwetware.org and are used by Dr. Nicholas Coleman, who is a huge supporter of our open source science efforts. The first buffer used during a mini prep is the resuspension buffer, also known as P1 or buffer A, depending upon the brand of kit you might order if you didn't have an awesome resource like ours to help you save money. The role of this buffer is to provide a medium to resuspend your cells after you've centrifuged them into a pellet and discarded the supernatant. It contains EDTA to reduce the effect of nucleases after lysis, and we will add RNAs to digest all the RNA that will otherwise be co-purified with our plasmids. As the only buffer that contains an enzyme, as well as chemical components, P1 must be kept refrigerated and will expire within six months regardless of care. Keep this in mind when choosing how much stock to make. The components we will be using today, in order of relative deadliness, are concentrated hydrochloric acid, EDTA disodium dihydrate, trispase, RNAs, and purified water. Reverse osmosis or milliQ is fine. You should be wearing a lab coat, gloves, and goggles for this one. Take extreme care, ensuring you have an eye wash station and shower handy in case something goes terribly, terribly wrong. Remember, when diluting hydrochloric acid, you gotta always do as you order. Add the acid to the water. Unless you want to instantly boil water and have acid spat in your face, dilute your hydrochloric acid by adding small quantities to a beaker of water and not the other way around. EDTA and Trispace are significantly safer, but you should avoid inhalation and skin contact or you're going to have significant irritation. If you're affected, immediately wash the affected area with water and soap and seek medical attention if irritation persists. While likely the safest of our ingredients, RNAs is known to cause allergic reactions for some people, generally after repeated exposure. Go to your doctor for that one too. Choose a well-ventilated area for mixing and avoid inhalation or skin contact and you'll be about as safe as I can help you to be. You'll be able to find SDS links in the video description as well as on our website foundry.bio. Always read the SDS for any new chemical you use, it just might save your life. Okay, let's get on with the show. Depending upon your volume of work, you may want a different quantity of stock solution than we want in the lab. On the screen, I will show you the weights and volumes for a 1 litre solution, while on the live demonstration you will see one tenth of the material used in order to make 100 mils of buffer. This conversion is relatively easy and can be scaled to any size you want. Don't sweat too much if your measurements are off by a few milligrams. I've mixed these buffers on some extremely old and poor quality scales and we've still gotten general success. So we're going to start with 15 mils of autoclaved milliQ water in a large clean beaker. Into this, we will drop 606 milligrams of Trispace crystals and then gently mix to allow them to dissolve. Next, we will add 374 milligrams of our EDTA crystals. Note, you might have a differently hydrated form of EDTA such as tetrahydrate. This should still work. Just chuck the new molecular mass into your molarity calculator and figure out the mass for a 10 millimolar solution. Simple, right? Note that you can mix this by hand, but it is a slightly endothermic reaction, so using a heated stirrer can help speed things up. Just be careful though, because this is getting hot very fast. Someone, someone stop that! Oh, oh dear! Okay, now we're going to dilute our concentrated hydrochloric acid by adding about a mil to a small beaker of sterile milliQ water. If it wasn't sterile before, it is now. Please remember to be super careful around concentrated acids, they will leave you with dreadful scarring. I won't repeat the nursery rhyme, but don't add water to concentrated acid, do it the other way around. Be sure that your mixed solution is cooled down to room temperature for the next stage. We're going to use our dilute acid to try bring the pH down to 8.0. If you overshoot by a bit, you can add a little bit of tris base to bring it back up. I won't tell anyone. Again, there is some tolerance for error with the concentrations, it's the pH that's going to be crucial. Now, bring your solution up to its final volume using the graduation on the beaker as your guide. Once you're satisfied with the pH of your final volume, you're going to need to sterilize the solution. You can do this by simply autoclaving, but you also have the option to filter sterilize the solution. You can do this in a laminar flow hood, but a Bunsen is just as effective for maintaining a sterile workspace. Spray down the area with ethanol, and be careful around that flame with your gloves. Here, we use a 0.22 micron filter to remove any potential contaminants from the solution, and use a syringe to inject it into an autoclaved bottle. Filter sterilizing with a small filter and syringe is difficult and a sweaty process.
watch our demonstrator struggle. Doesn't he look silly? If you're smarter than us, you'll get a larger filter and syringe, or use vacuum filtration to make this process less painful. I'm also going to inject 14 mils into a falcon tube for immediate use. While both will need to be kept in the fridge, I'll only be adding my RNAs A to this tube due to its short shelf life. It would take too long to break down all the various units and concentrations that RNAs A can come in, but the final concentration that you need to have in this tube is 100 micrograms per mil. On the bright side, RNAs is super stable while in powdered form. So stable, in fact, that our lab uses the scrapings from the bottom of this jar, chucked out by a far wealthier establishment. God bless capital- And now you have your buffer P1 ready to use. Keep both the stock solution and the 15mm falcon tube in the fridge. Solutions with RNAs should be stable for about 3 months, and the stock solution for at least 6 months. 9 months is a stretch, and by the 12 month mark, you'll be back here watching this video again to remix your buffers. We'll see you then! The protocols in this video series were written by Dr. Nicholas Coleman from the University of Sydney, who himself learnt them from openwetware.org. Openwetware likely reverse engineered the recipes from Queergen's commercial buffer kit, which is now expired IP and held as a trade secret. Use these skills and the knowledge that you stand on the shoulders of giants, and live in a time of unprecedented sharing of knowledge. Subscribe to the channel, find us on Twitch, or head to foundry.bio to join our community of DIY biologists.